Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much, Ma. That was a very insightful session. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody. Can we just give ourselves a round of applause? Come on now, we can do it better. Okay. Why are we here? You're a stakeholder in the life of a child. Your parents, your mother, father, auntie, uncle. My favorite thing to say is, is that it takes a village to raise a child and you are part of that village. And that's why we're going to have a session where we'll be asking ourselves questions as parents that what are you doing that is making it work? Because like I said, it takes a village. So the things that you're doing that it makes it work is what I'm going to learn from. And now I'd like to call on the following people. Please give them a round of applause as I call on them. Mr. Owe, yeah. Come on, good morning. Okay. Mr. Onigbi Day. Mrs. Bumi Dou. Mrs. Enuke. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Please, if I didn't, please correct me. And Mrs. Aladelua. Let's give them a round of applause as we wait for them to come up. All right, thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, so like I was saying, while we're waiting for them to um, come on, it's no news that there's a, um, there's a changing landscape uh, in the world today. Everything is changing, and things are not um, like the way it was you know, during our parents' generation. And even the way we grew up, things are really, really changing thanks to digital um, technology, thanks to social media, things that were not part of us before. And one of the goals of the session is, like I said before, learn from each of us from villages. I have parents of teenagers here. I have parents of twins. I'm a parent of an under five and um, I'm here to learn. So I've got my notes here. So thank you once again. And please, it's it's... It's a conversation, please. I'm going to have us ask questions and answer questions as we go. So thank you once again, and um, you're welcome, Ma. So my first question is, as a parent of a teenager, of a twin, how do you handle um, technology? How much involvement do you allow um, your child to have um, with technology, knowing that children these days are digital natives? We, as um, our, our parents, they, we, we, we met um, with digital media, but they, they were giving birth to in this digital, everything that is going on. And you'll be amazed that even a two-year-old, if you let your phone lie one way, I know, the people are nodding their head. If you just drop your phone anyhow like this, <laughs> they will press on things that even you, you're like, come on, how did you even get here? You're supposed to be a two-year-old. So I'm going to ask you um, the first question. Yes, please. <laughs> Okay, um, thank you. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'd say our times are different, like um, Dr. Mrs. Ekine has ex emphasized. And we are always amazed, always fascinated at um, what our children can do and what they do with um, devices, be it the phone, even the desktop, mm. I tell you. I think they have time, they are swifter with their fingers, and it's just something, when they get on any device, they just keep going. Um, to start with, uh, I would say things changed a lot, even for the most conservative parents after, um, during COVID. Because even um, parents who would ordinarily not expose their children to devices had to get on online classes. And so that was the beginning of exposure for many children, for those who were not on devices already. Now, um, so for me, that informs the um, notion that parents need to ex educate themselves about technology, about the internet, about various ways you can get in and out. And that's, that means you need to monitor them. During the um, COVID period, um, you had to be there with them. You know, but most parents had to get back to work, and so children were exposed, and they begin to get into all kinds of um, sites. So that was a problem. That's a place to expose children. Um, a way to curtail this is, I think, Google has made it easier. There's a link, there's a site called Google um, link Family App, fa Google Family Link. So you can use that to curtail, to, to, to um, monitor your children's use of the internet. They need the internet, that's the truth. At this level, we, at the times we are in now, we cannot completely take it off them. 
but then you can control the sites they go to. So once you have the Google app, um, I know there are more technical people here who can tell us better how it works, but layman language, you have the Google app, you register the child, the age appropriate, and um, the child's age, the phone, the device, you link it to yours. So whatever um, application you want the child to, to, be, to, be, to be able to access, you have that on their phone. If they try to download any other thing on their own phone, it would need the parent's permission. So it will come to your phone. If they try to access any other site, it will come to your phone. And so when you permit it, it's, um, it's, um, it's downloaded in the child's own um, phone. And that goes for every other thing. And besides um, the places they go to, you can also curtail the time they spend on the phone. My son is here. He just sent a message that they should ask me if I came with my charger. He wants to power up his phone. He has, right now, he has only three hours on his phone the whole day. So if you go on internet, whether it's on WhatsApp, you are doing your homework because they still go to Google Classroom. You are doing your homework, you are copying your notes. You have, whatever he has to do, he has to do within three hours in the day. So once the phone light is on, it's unlocked, the time is counting. So you can curtail the time spent on each application too. It is that, that um, um, detailed. So it's an application I think every parent should have on their system to be able to monitor their children's um, devices if it's absolutely necessary that they are on the internet. If not, please take it off them because there are so many things that they can um, get exposed to. I don't know if that's sufficient. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, thank you so much, Ma. Uh, my next question is for Mr. Onibidi. How do you, um, Okay, like she just spoke about um, handling screen time and all of that. And I know that you have children from different ages. So how do you handle screen time for them, apart from what she just did? Or is this the same thing you do also? Well, for me, uh, in addition to everything that she has said, I mean, you can control, monitor time and all that. What I also do is, at every stage they are, uh, they already know what and what they are not supposed to do. They are also, once you do this, they are going to cross a line <laughs> with, with, with me, with Ali. Either their mom or with me, especially. They all know. At our age, the other is teenager, even though that is uh, the youngest one, they know what you will not do because you talk a lot. As much as possible, every morning we pray together. On weekends, we take time a lot, like read the Bible. So they all already know what they are supposed to do. And once you cross the line with me, Sorry, a few of you that are rendering my by the other, you can see their comment. One of them said that is very. What did what, she use? Is he? What did we use? Something erratic or something. <laughs> that was used for me in public. And I didn't, I didn't rebuke her, I didn't abuse her. Because I will still do that erratic for you if you do. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't fight that. What did she use? I've forgotten. Something like, something like erratic, but that's not the word. It's even worse, it's even worse than erratic. <laughs> you get? So my own is that, okay, you know the limit. You know where you are not going to go. And any time I catch you going there, you know I will draw a line immediately. So that has made to reduce. That is why you have to have in terms of control and all that. So you know where they will not go. They know where they will go. They know where you are. Even for uh, the youngest, as you said. So sometimes you see me every Sunday around, when service has started, like just minutes, I walk out to go and see what he's doing in, 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 in children's church. I know I can't be everywhere, but what I can, I can check, I do check. So that I might be out of the church, leave the church service. Touch into the service, I go and check that he's not sleeping, or he's not, because I know he can do all those things, he can sleep off, or he can say he's playing. And I just say, I'm coming to, he knows that I'm coming to check him. And if you do any of those things, by the time you come, you have to talk about this, I may not be able to have to come and discuss it. So they all know these, the rules are very clear as much as possible to them. We well, haven't even given it to you to go. Always allow you to be uh, like, it's what, what I like. Power this thing the most de devices. But then, several times I'll see it. I buy it for him. Sometimes for one month or for two weeks, he won't see it, depending on the gravity of the offense. So they also they know that. Daddy will not take all these things. I think that has helped them a lot. I'm not saying I control everything, but they know where and where they will know. It's very clear to them what they will not do. 
Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Mrs. Bumi, I, I know that um, you have under 10 children, so I want you to speak on children and discipline, um, enforcing discipline when it comes to screen time, because I know that you're also an educator, and um, from what we've seen, we see that a lot of parents say that oh, we, we, need, we need that screen time so that we can get other things done. So I want you to speak on Okay, are there excesses? What are the excesses when your child is pushing back and throwing, and throwing tantrums because you're taking that screen time away? What can you do as a parent? Okay, um, just like you said, children love screen time. All ch almost all children, especially when you have exposed them to, um, would I say maximum hours of screen, screen time from when they are very, very, very young. I, for one, I never exposed my children to phones when they were babies. Because I see three months old babies now trying to grab your phone. I never did that. Maybe because I've been in the education sector since I started having my children. So, but what I I do when they are young is to get educational videos. If I'm going to expose them to any screen time at all, then it has to be that the child is learning. So we have a lot of educational videos, they're learning sounds when they're young, they're learning sounds, they're learning uh, colors, all, all the things that they need to know, you know. So it's not just the regular cartoon. Because in the regular cartoon now, you have all sorts of things that your children are being exposed to that you do not want them to get exposed to. So, um, but I still have a particular child, the second one, who fights, practically fights with me when I don't allow her to stay in front of the TV. And because she wants to watch the TV, even when I say you need to do your homework on time, if you don't finish your homework, you can't have access to any cartoon. She's very smart and intelligent. So within 10 minutes, 15 minutes, she's done. Even if she has four homework, you, and you realize that she actually did it well. Most times, Friday evening, once she gets back from school, she starts doing her homework because she wants to watch cartoon on Saturday. So I, I, I don't give her that luxury of time all the time to just sit in front of the TV because I know that I may not be there to monitor what exactly they are watching. However, the older one helps me to caution her sometimes. There was a very a, a particular day that I secretly, though I didn't tell her, but I was proud of her. They were watching a particular um, animated movie. So I was in my bedroom resting. I think it was a Sunday after church. And Apparently, the animated movie finished, and they started showing something else on that particular station. She came to my room, and she said, Mommy, I needed to change the channel because the, what they were showing is not appropriate for our age. You know, I was secretly, you know, I was excited that, okay, she knows she's not supposed to watch this, and she took the right decision. So I, even in school, I, I had situations where we've had to call some parents for meetings because we realized that some children are not learning in school because of the exposure to cartoons. You see, I, I had a particular parent. The children are not in our school anymore. However, uh, that time, the parents told me that the children, they were boys, they used to wake up in the middle of the night to watch cartoon and she couldn't say no. So when it comes to allowing our children to watch the TV or um, getting exposed to things that we don't want them to really get exposed to, we need to put our foot down. It comes to having rules and you stick to it. If it is just one hour on a week, on a Saturday, make sure that they don't exceed that one hour, and with time, they will get used to it. Thank you very much, Ma. I like what you said. It, it, it reminds me that actions have consequences, and so it, 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 it tells us that as parents, when they know that these are the rules and this is what should be done, 
But of course, they will test us. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, Mrs. Adelua, I know that you have a teenager. And I want to ask that how do you, um, how do you keep that bond? Because, you know, teenagers sometimes feel like they know everything. They've arrived. Everything is there. But how do you keep that bond such that the child keeps coming back to you? Keep that, um, that friendship space in spite of all these many things that are going on. Um, thank you. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if, it, if my volume is... Don't mind my voice. It's always bedroom size. Um, when it comes to engaging and bonding with the children, especially the teenage age, I'm more of a conversation person. And one of those things I have settled with myself is that there were way we were brought up. And they said if you don't want a, an insanity to continue to the next generation, that means you need to change the way you handle yours. So I have paid attention and I knew there were way we were raised that we did not like. And I don't want to pass it to, to the children. So most of the time I ask myself questions and I'm not quick to taking decision. If there's anything wrong, I take my time, okay? And like uh, one of the, what, what our facilitator said about prayer, I ask God, God, well, how will you have me undo this? So like I said, when it comes to engaging and you know, bonding with my teenage girl, I, I do a lot of conversation with her. And one of the, like we talk about technology, one of those things I used to tell them, you know, sometimes we might succeed in telling them where to go at home. But the truth is, they still go out. So one of those things I remind her of every time, I say, see, no matter how much information I want to tell you, it is the one you, you, you take and you put into action that will see in your life. And I, and I will tell her again, I say, it's just like going to the market. I say, if you go to the market, you see everybody display what they are selling. I say, but apart from the money in your pocket that you go to the market with, there's a limit to what you can buy. And it's not everything they sell that is for your use. So I will tell her, I said, yes, I might tell you, don't do that. You, re you respect me in my presence. You might respect me in my presence, but... Sorry? So I said, there might be things you do in my presence, but when you are out there, you are something else. And I told her that the life, the world is like a market. And so many things will be thrown at you. You should mind, you know, what you are trying to get. Like I said, you know, engaging with her now at a different level. And I don't want to go like the way of our father that did not work. So sometimes there was a time I have to sit her down. I said, I knew sometimes I'm not happy at the way you get things done. And I'm concerned. And I said, okay, can, can we talk? And I have to take my Bible. I said, mommy, is it that serious? I said, yes. So I took it. I said, okay, can we start? Okay, when it comes to socials, what, what is important to you? And you know, well, you know, she was able to open up. She tells me maybe sometimes the way I handle her and the rest. And, and did you take, like, um, did you take yes. action on those things? Because sometimes yes. as parents, we say we want to have a conversation, but we're not having the conversation. We are just, just stuck. Yeah, you see, a lot of us are nodding our head. We just, we like to just, uh, okay, for just let's know that we are having a conversation, but I want to do what I want to do. Yeah, the truth is, like I said, it is a form of conversation. I allow that. I'll, I bring out my notes. No, mommy, it would, like I said, she would ask mommy, is it that? So I say, yes. I have to jot it down. Okay, when it comes to your social life, where did I come in? How, is it, how are you taking it? You know, the peer pressure. She tells me like, all that. Sorry, sorry to cut it's you short. Right. I want to ask Mr. Way that how much liberty should a child get? Because now we're saying, um, let's have conversations. In our parents' time, we didn't really have conversations like that, but we're trying to have conversations now. And with this conversation, let's call example, where okay. this thing that you, the child is asking you, okay. of course, it's obvious that okay. what you are asking me, I'm not going to give you, but okay. the child is pushing you. And you're trying to not be that parent that is nagging, always shouting and not listening that, oh, I can't talk to my daddy because my dad does not listen to me. Okay, now I'll go back to that tech end okay. where we started earlier. Now, um, what I did practically in my house was when I realized that they started demanding for pad and a phone, I had to tell them that until you get to a certain age, we are just said you know, like that to them. And that was the first guy. Then I told him that, look, I'll buy you a phone when you are through, when you're about to finish your secondary school. And when I realized that he was about to finish secondary school, we bought him. But before we bought him a phone, 
Anytime he wants to use anything like that, we give our mother's phone or my own phone. You understand? So, you know, initially it for, was our mother's phone. For this phone. example that you just gave, yes. I, I'm not trying to interrupt you, but I'm just trying to follow a train of thought. How did you handle peer pressure in school? Yes, Because yes. You, you know that he's going to have friends that have all these gadgets and all of that, and yes. it's going to come. Yes, so how know. did you handle that? Yes, that's what I'm saying. You get to know what, what he's experiencing in school by the virtue of what he does on phone. On your par on the parents' phone, on yes, on the parents because you know, I, I he, he was not able to 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 wipe those things. He was just doing them. You understand? So you can easily trace them if you want to. You understand? So that was what we did. So he started using the mother's phone, using my own phone. So when he left for school, when he left for school after like a week, after like a week, then I I took the mother's phone and I began to check. And I saw certain things there, you understand? And you know, I was like, ah, ah, I had to wait, calm down, till he came back from school. And when he came from school, you know, for the first one week, we didn't discuss it. I didn't say anything about it, everything was just normal. But it got to a point, I sat him down, I said, ah, Oga, I saw these things, how come? You know, and there's one thing in my house, we have made it a point of duty that you will not lie, you don't disobey, and you will not disrespect, okay. those three things. You understand? So they are just basic. It will tell you the truth. So, All right. Thank you so much. So in um, in before we go, I just want us to speak as parents because our time is fast spent. Um, the things that you are doing that is working for you. You know, I said earlier that it takes a village to raise a child. What is that one primary thing that you are doing as a parent? spiritually and um, on the other side that is helping your child that you think can help other parents that are listening right now? I'll start from you, Ma. Okay, um, thank you. I'd say the primary thing is um, have time with the children. That cannot be overemphasized because you can discipline, like I say, restrict them on their devices, restrict them in their going, keep a sheltered life. And if they are going to do stuff, they'll do it right before you. You know, so we need to spend time with them. You need, we need to um, put in the right values in them. And like um, Dr. Ekine says, we need to do that early. It's an example I always say wherever I have, whenever I have an opportunity. A Buddhist child at four can perform their sacrifices and their everything completely in the temple at age four. So if a Buddhist child can do that, the Christian child has no excuse. Thank you very much. We should always find a way. So um, one thing I say is, okay, um, we're busy. I'm very busy. I'm a very, very busy mom. I know that. But I find a way. It's difficult, but I find a way. And I talk to parents also. I, am a, I, I love children. I've always loved children. If it wasn't my job, I'm sure I'd have had seven or something. I love children. Now, um, well, maybe I exaggerated. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I talk to people when it comes to upbringing, raising children. I, I listen and I ask questions. If you have it right, I'm talking to you. If you get it right, I'm going to find a way to talk to you. So, and uh, s devotion time, it was tough. Evenings, I used to get back home like 7, 7.30 until recently. And then getting devotion after they would have eaten homework, it was, it was tough. But we'll, get, we'll do it somehow, but it just meant the children would sleep later. And it was affecting them. You know, um, and I cherish that moment because it's an instructional time also. That's something I'll talk about, it, but there's no time. It's a time to put instruction because this is something we should note as parents. A lot of times we are correctional. We don't have time for instruction. A lot of times we are just saying, don't do that. Don't, it's wrong. Why, how can you, who, who, you know? But do we have time to say, this is what we stand for. These are our values. You don't do this. When things like this happen, what, ha what would you do? We should have time. I use that devotion, evening devotion time for that. But it became too difficult to sustain that. So the mornings, I learned from a friend. She wakes them up at 5. I thought I, I was too early living in Ibadan. They should sleep. But I wake them up at 5.30. And I buy devotionals for each of them, even the one that's 7, the youngest. The three of them, they will sit, sit with their Bibles, whether you are dozing on the thing or not, just be there. When you finish, you say your prayers, and then we'll start having our baths. So, so these times they spend, and then when we're going to school, I'm asking you what you learned from that. 
So that's a way to relate with the children, spend time bonding Saturday, go out, you know, and in the car, let them talk. Sometimes turn off your radio. Just let, let them be talking. You don't have to talk to them. You get to know what's on their mind. Be around them. Sometimes I come back home, I'm tired, but I just sit in the sitting room. They are watching TV, and I'm watching and I'm dozing. Or they're having a conversation, I'm sitting. You get to hear what they say. You know, spend time with them, put in your values with them, into them, and um, be, be, be instructional and um, as you are correctional as well. And then we keep praying for them. Thank you very much. Be instructional and correctional at the same time. Uh, Mrs. Bumi, any passing words before we, because our time is over already. Um, what I do is to, aside from communicating the values that we want in our home, I also lead by example. So I, do, I don't just tell them, okay, these are the values your dad and I want us to have in this family, but I do it. And as I do it, they emulate. And I get to see it, even when I'm not really, really paying attention, I get to get feedbacks from people, you know, saying, how do you do it? And I say, I don't do anything special, you know, with my children, but I have a friend, in, my neighbor in Lagos does not believe that I don't do anything special. She even said, I'm coming to you to come and learn from you. And you know, that tells me that I'm doing something, even though, uh, like I always say, I, I know how to shout a lot, and I'm <laughs> trying to learn not to shout, especially with my second child. But I think leading by example and showing them the way of God is very important. Between last week and this week, I realized that my second daughter has been learning to trust God a lot. So when something is happening, she prays. She doesn't tell me she has, she's praying about it. She prays about it. And, that, and we get results. And when we get results, she tells me, Mommy, do you know I prayed about it? And this morning, I was looking for my khaki. I came late because I was looking for my khaki. And when eventually I found the key, we got inside the car. She said, Mommy, do you know I prayed that God will help you to find the key? You know? So when you teach them the way of God, they know what to do at every point in time. It doesn't mean that their lives will be perfect all through. It doesn't mean they won't make mistakes. We as adults even make mistakes. But even in their mistakes, God is helping them. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am. Mrs. Aladelua. Yeah, like I said. Very short, please. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Like I said. One I, minute. One minute. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm going to say three things. One, the place of engaging them. Two, the place of prayer. Like I said, there were things I want to see my daughter. Sometimes we might not, we might not be able to say to them all. And like the time I really wish her to improve on her spiritual life, somehow there was a group they started in church and they were engaging her every morning to pray by five, you know, so God answers prayer. And there was a time I was, you know, there are other values I want her to see, I'm particular about the people I associate myself with mm. and the people I allowed her to, as, you know, by association to, there were things they learned. And at that time, a mentor was given to her. So somehow they, they, we, they say master... <laughs> Prayer is a master key. So if it is the master key, there is nothing we cannot do with it. And there is a scripture that has helped me a lot, and that is, you know, that the Holy Spirit will be their teacher. And you can imagine if the Holy Spirit is their teacher, they will, those things we, we are trying to pass across to them, they will come home and tell you how, you know, they discovered it. Thank you so very the much, Lord is our strength. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Nick Bidi, okay. one minute, sir. There are two broad uh, ideas that guide my relationship or interaction with them. One is that I'm aware of my own limitation first. I can't be with them all the time. Even the thing we are talking about, I'm not that techie, so I don't know it as much as you do. They even teach me. They show it to me. So I don't try to fight them and, you know, that's what I have to do. It's okay. Train up a child, do that you should go. And when he's grown up, he won't depart from it. I have to stick it as much as possible, like I said earlier on. Make it clear to them. And as much as possible, look out to see, you know, how they will not, you know, violate some of, some of those things at different stages where they are, where they are, they are trying to do. Largely, those are the framework. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, in my own case, we try as much as possible, like, you know, every morning, I mean, every night, from 9 o'clock, we sit, we read Bible. They will explain what they read, we explain, you understand. And from there, by the time they are giving their own explanation, you realize that you can, you can detect things to correct from their, from the way they view things. So from there, I realized that they are getting better and they are, they are just doing good. 
And as a family, we are, we are perfect by the grace of God. Amen. Thank yes. you so much. Uh, a round of applause for our panelists. Thank you, everybody. One of the things that we have learned is that um, be instructional and correctional. Do what you're saying. Don't just do, don't, don't just say as you say, do it. And prayer is really, really, really paramount. Before we go, I just want to talk about a scripture, Psalm 119, verse 18. It says, open my eyes that I may know. Help me see. So you, while we say pray, you can pray very specific prayers, and God can give you specific. Thank you. So, like I was saying, you can pray specific prayers about things. We may not have addressed something that is personal to you. And, of course, the Holy Spirit is ever ready to help you. So, please, as parents, let's pray very specific prayers. And God will give us solutions that are specific to us. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.